Good afternoon, everybody. I just uh, wanted to um, post a little video and, and number one, tell you thank you. I really appreciate your love, your um, sweet prayers and words of condolences, not only for me, but for Tim's family, his wife, um, his girls and, and sisters. And he still has a, a brother that's still with us as well. Um, I know they appreciate it as well. Um, gosh, it's felt. And uh, um, today has been kind of a, a heavy day for me. I'm sure it has been for them, although I really haven't um, been in contact with them specifically. I just, uh, I just know, right? You know, Tim and I go way back. Gosh, I, I moved to Freeport um, in 73, um, probably the first time I met him. I'm sure we were, we were in the same class. I don't remember a lot of kids in, in 73. I was in the seventh grade. In the eighth grade, uh, I tried out for the basketball team and I'm sure he was right there. Now, I'm sure he made it. I didn't make the eighth grade team. Uh, but in the ninth grade, I did. And we were on the same team, played side by side. Um, and then, uh, gosh, in the 10th grade, I actually started as the center in our, uh, like a junior varsity team. And I remember one game in specific, specifically, we were playing our arch rival, Ponce de Leon. Tim actually was the captain of our, our junior varsity team. And uh, junior varsity plays just before the varsity, so it's getting down to the closing seconds of the, of the game, and the gym is packed because they're there to see the varsity. And we understood that. And uh, But we're down by one point. The ball's being taken out on the, on the uh, coach's um, side of the court, in fact, in front of the opponent's uh, um, uh, bench. Their player, attempt, uh, in the, and we'd had a timeout, and the coach said, Daryl, I want you on the ball. And I said, okay. And you just, you know, make it hard for him to pass it in. Sure thing, coach. So um, the player gets the whistle blows, the official hands him the ball, and the player tries to pass it to my left. So I'm facing him to my left, and I just put my hand out real quick. I actually hit the ball. And it starts bouncing down the court. And I, uh, I'm i kind of frozen for a second and the coach says, run. So I I run after it. Me and one of their players get there at the same time. I think he was a little point guard, a little bitty guy. Um, and, and I knock him down when I got the ball. Didn't mean to knock him down, but we got there at the same time and, and hit and he fell down and I dribbled on him and scored and a buzzer rang. Our starting uh, shooting forward, John Godwin said, Daryl, I was right there behind you in case you missed. <laughs> he understood my skill. So we come together in the huddle and Tim, I, I remember Tim saying, okay guys, let's put Daryl up on our shoulders and let's carry him off. And I, I think that was my real first memory of Tim and they, in front of a full crowd, you know, the benches are, are not the benches, but the, the gymnasium is full. Um, and they picked me up and carried me off as I had uh, luckily stolen the ball and took it in and scored. And then, uh, you know, we played football together and, and, and the next three years, those three years, well, four years, 10th, 11th, 12th, 9th, 10th, 11th, in 12th, we played basketball together. And I don't think, I was on the very first football team for Freeport, and I don't think we had a football team until my 10th grade, grade year. And I think Tim uh, was on that team as well. But we played the same position, um, both offense and defensive ends. Uh, and on the basketball court, we were both uh, either the power forward on varsity. Now, he didn't play uh, center on the uh, uh, junior varsity, 
but he did play the power forward. So I was a backup center and, and he would play power forward or both play power forward on, on, the, uh, on the varsity team. I will share this with you. One, one night he and I were coming home from uh, Fort Walton. It was either a Friday or a Saturday night. It was late at night. Um, I'm not too sure where we may have gone to see a movie or something. Can't remember exactly what. And we were turning left off of um, Highway 98 onto Highway 331. Now at that time there was nothing south of the bay on three on 331. As we turned, there was a hitchhiker there with a lighter. He was trying to be seen. And as we passed him, Tim said, hey, did you see that? And I said, no, I, I didn't see anything. He goes, there was a hitchhiker back there. Let's go pick him up. I said, sure. So that's that's Tim's heart. So we go, go around. We turn around, pick him up. I get out, and he gets in the front seat between us. He was a young guy. You know, we're, I don't know, juniors or seniors. And um, uh, we're just young and dumb. And we're uh, starting to head north, and he asked him where he's going. He said, I'm just headed north, not too sure exactly where. And Tim was like, well, I can take you a few miles north um, after we drop Daryl off. And as we were talking, Tim and I were just naive and curious, right? I'm like, uh, so, you know, you're out on the road. Do you carry money with you? And he goes, yeah. My gosh, where do you, aren't you afraid of, you know, people um, stealing it and being rough with you? And he goes, no, not really. Where do you, uh, where do you keep it? Now, re realize, Tim and I were just, well, at least me, I'm, I'm just naive. I'm, I'm not meaning anything by it at all. And uh, he's like, and he's starting to get a little uncomfortable. He goes, well, I usually put it down in my shoes. And I said, oh, okay, cool. Well, that sounds like a great place. About that time, we have to turn off of 331 onto the dirt road that I lived on. Now, this is the mid-70s. I mean, there's no street lights, and it's a dirt road. Very few houses. Oh, this poor kid was getting squirmy, squirmy, Tim was kind of smiling and I'm like, well, he, he's going to see that he's just going to drop me off. So we go a half a mile down that dirt road and it's darker and there's just a couple of houses. And then he turns into my driveway um, and we had a little circle drive, pulls in front of the house. I jump out and say, hey, Tim, see you later, buddy. And I say goodbye to this guy and you, you could just see him like, holy cow, thought it was so weird. <laughs> On Monday, Tim and I chuckled about that poor guy. He goes, yeah, I just took him up to Freeport and dropped him off. And uh, I'm sure he got a, dry, a ride out of Freeport on, on north to, to Funiac Springs. So, yeah, it's just one of the things that wasn't like we were getting in trouble or anything. It's just, it was just us, you know, just being friendly guys. So, Tim was a good guy. He was a son of a farmer. His dad was a hog farmer and a, they grew watermelon as well, acres of watermelon. And, you know, during, uh, during the harvest point, it didn't matter what was going on at school. Um, he could come to school, but afterwards he went straight home. It was understood that he and his brothers and sisters um, were at home during harvest helping with the harvesting, helping getting all the watermelons out of the field. Um, it was a lot, of, a lot of hard work. JW, his daddy was a, was a, was a hard working man and he expected a lot from his kids. And uh, Tim consequently was a, just a hard working uh, individual. He used to joke. He knew what my circumstances were that, I, you know, I was helping my dad build a house and I didn't have a lot of free time. Every once in a while on a Friday or a Saturday night, I could go out, but usually um, after school and all, all weekend, 
um, I was home working on, on the house and um, he understood the, what I was going through, having gone through what he uh, was living. And he used to joke that, uh, yeah, I'm the, I'm one of the rich guys that has to stay home and work. So he, he goes, I understand you, what you have to do, but you're, you're, you're one of the rich guys. No, we were uh, definitely middle class and, and uh, no richness here, just an understanding that, uh, you know, when dad said work, you worked, you know, you just worked. Tim was my buddy though, golly, I could count on him for anything, anything, anytime. Um, he would, every time we got off the phone, everything okay, anything I can do, just uh, um, super kind, super willing to share whatever he could with me, uh, help me out in any way. Um, when I went to Freeport, he he was uh, top of the list to see. So loved him very much. He he was he was my brother. He was one of seven. Is that right? Stanton, Terry, Joe, Sid. Stanton, Terry, Joe, Sid, Tim, Stacy, and, and um, another daughter there. So, yeah, seven. So he was he was the fourth of seven. He had two younger sisters. But I loved him very much, and I just wanted to say thank you again for your kindness your outpouring uh, of love and not only again not only for me but for his family and uh, and remember as we always say be stronger every day and know that you can do hard things thanks <laughs>